Hello everybody, this is Pesky Ran Chicken Ann, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own Twitch emotes from start to finish. I've been active on Twitch a lot this year and recently hit affiliate status, ooh, which means I can start offering subscriptions and a perk for that is custom emotes. At first it was really challenging and frustrating, but I quickly figured out an efficient, fast, and totally free way of making my own emotes and making them look awesome. So the things you will need would be, you know, a, like a slight ability to draw, the Autodesk sketchbook app, and GIMP. And again, this tutorial is just how I made my emotes, which I found to be the easiest and best way for me personally. But feel free to take similar ideas and find your own comfortable method. So the first thing I did was actually grab a pen and paper and just start doodling ideas for my emotes. After I had three good ones drawn out, I took a picture of them on my phone and then go ahead and open the sketchbook app and click new sketch. And the size of it really doesn't matter, just make it a moderately good size and have the width be the same as the height or just like a perfect square. It's not super necessary, but it does help when you're downsizing them later. Then go ahead and import your sketch photo, make sure it fits nicely in your square, and then change the opacity on the layer to be pretty low since we're basically going to be tracing over it. Make a new layer above your pen drawing and then pick a tool in the app to start drawing your outline. I like to use this brush as you need hard lines for emotes to really come through after you downsize them. This app has a great feature called Predictive Stroke and it essentially smoothens out your lines since your finger, of course, isn't gonna draw perfectly straight lines. You can hide your reference image while you're drawing to make sure everything looks okay. And then once you finish your lines, make a new layer to start coloring it in. Okay, so since I already finished one emote, I went back to it to grab the color palette to make sure my emotes are cohesive. So on a new layer, I started coloring in the base skin color. I like to go all the way outside the lines to make sure I don't miss anything on the inside. Then do some basic shading and highlighting. It doesn't have to be perfect since the emote will turn out to be really small. So it's almost better to make the shadows and highlights kind of blocky and unsmooth so that they might actually pop out when the emote is really tiny. Now that the skin is done, make a new layer and do the same thing. The order of layers is kind of important and I typically always do skin first because it's, you know, beneath everything else. Another thing that's helpful is to make the background a dark color when you're erasing because sometimes it's really easy to not see some pixels against a white background. So comparing it to a dark one makes that stuff pop out a bit more to me. Another great feature is the little lock icons on the layers. If you press that, it locks the transparency, so you basically won't color outside your beautiful, perfect lines. And I find this feature to be super nice and helpful, especially when shading hair, because there's so many details and colors going everywhere. Imagine trying to erase the airbrush that goes out of the lines. It would be so annoying. Once you finish the hair, or whatever you decided to color, you can merge down the layers to save space. Only do this when you are completely done coloring that section and you've erased all the stuff outside the lines that don't need to be there because once you merge, those layers and colors are connected and it's much harder to correct mistakes. Merging layers is optional, but I think this app might have a limit, not sure. I just merge them to save space, basically. But then after you merge or finish that layer, make a new one and repeat until everything on your remote is colored. On the bottom most layer, or the background, click on the eye to hide it, and boom, now you have a transparent background. So go to the menu, click share, save the image, and then you're done with the hard part. I choose to upload my stuff through Google Drive since that's like easier for me, but however you decide, you just need to get that photo from your phone to your computer. Once you have it, go ahead and open up GIMP and make a new canvas with the correct Twitch sizes. I don't know why, but I always like to start with the largest one being 112 by 112. So drag your image to GIMP, go ahead and delete the background layer, 
and then right click on your images layer, click where it says scale layer, put in the dimensions and hit scale. That's it. Export and then repeat the exact same process for the other sizes. If your remote is stuck with a white background, even without the background layer, here's a really easy trick to remove it. I found the eraser doesn't erase to transparency for whatever reason, so you have to use the fuzzy select tool, click the background area that you want to erase, and you can hold shift while clicking other areas to select more than one, but right click the image, go to layer, transparency, click add alpha channel, and then once you've done that, right click again, edit, and hit clear. Boom! Transparent background. Now export like normal. And that's it! Oh my god, I just hit my mic. Go ahead and upload your three sizes on the Twitch and give it a name! I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and I hope it saved you from headaches, from paying someone else, or having unoriginal emotes that you're unhappy with. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash pesky or sub me if you want to use these emotes yourself. Anyway, this has been Pesky Ren. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.